the command and control trailers. These trailers are self-sustaining and contain electrical generators and communications equipment that can be moved out anywhere in the country to start a FEMA operations center. Several military manuals, such as these manuals, ranging from 1985 through 1994, speak of FEMA as the implementing agency for Operation Garden Plot, the plan to put American citizens in prison camps under military control. This 1994 field manual for military police speaks of Operation Garden Plot as a DOD civil disturbance plan that tells the military what they can and cannot do and that they will operate under FEMA control. Several thousand U.S. troops are training in the U.S. this summer and fall, and if we look around us, we can see plenty of the signs and symptoms of a global takeover under the auspices of the United Nations taking place right here in our country. These trucks are Soviet trucks imported from eastern Germany, parked at a private facility in the DeSoto National Forest in Sotier, Mississippi, just outside Gulfport off Highway 59. A sign on the facility says Airmar. Airmar is privately owned, but the signs on fences around the facility say this is a U.S. Customs facility. Several acres of federal forest land was bulldozed to create this customs facility solely for Airmar. No one knows for sure what this facility really is, but one thing is certain, it's not what we're being told it is. And there are 750 Soviet chemical trucks sitting in Mississippi whose sole use is to spray chemicals and nerve gas in chemical warfare operations. What are they doing in Mississippi? What are they doing on U.S. soil? And why are they under the protection of the U.S. government if they are privately owned? Senator Sam Nunn from Georgia was quoted as saying he was certain the American public would welcome the Soviet troops as peacekeeping forces in the United States. Not only have these Soviet trucks been found in Mississippi, people recently photographed these two clearly marked Soviet vehicles in Texas. This train full of American-made tanks was one of seven such trains that passed through Indianapolis en route to Fort Lewis, Washington in June. We were told that this was the third armored division returning from Europe. Yet Fort Lewis has such a severe housing shortage that many military families are actually living in tents. Yet this whole division is being sent there. Three other such trains passed through Indianapolis in early August, one heading to Fort Riley, Kansas, another to Alabama, and a third to Fort Lewis, Washington. Are these tanks part of Operation Garden Plot to be used to round us up for the slave labor camps along with the black helicopters and federal law enforcement that look like active duty military stationed in our roadways as they were in Waco? Welcome to the New World Order. Expect no mercy. Okay, folks. That, that was uh, a video that I wanted to play for you to get a general idea of what's going on in this country. And to proceed on, I ask Bad Baby to read that information for us, please. Okay. According to CNN, the Pentagon is to establish regional teams of military personnel to assist civilian authorities in the event of the significant outbreak of the H1N1 virus this fall. According to the Defense Department officials, the proposal is awaiting final approval from the Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates. The officials would, be, would not be identified because of the proposal from the U.S. Northern Command. General Victor Renard has been has not been approved by the Secretary. The plan calls for military task force to work in conjunction with the Federal Emergency Management Agency. There is no final decision on how the military effort will be manned, but one source said it would likely include personnel from all branches of the military. It has not yet been determined how many troops would be needed and whether they would come from active duty or from the National Guard Reserve forces, civilian authorities would lead any relief efforts in an effort to a major outbreak of, the, of this official virus. The military, as they would for a natural disaster and other significant emergency situations, could provide support and fulfill any task that civilian authorities could not, such as air transport, testing, and large numbers of viral samples 
from injected patients. As a first step, Gates is being asked to sign a so-called execution order that would authorize the military to begin and conduct a detailed planning to execute the purpose plan. Orders to deploy actual forces would be reviewed later depending on how much of the health threat of the flu poses this fall. The official said CNN military plan for the possible H1N1 outbreak in July of 2009 emphasizes added. In House debate on the banker's rescue, Bill Representative Brad Schumann told his fellow Congress critters the government will declare martial law and the stock market will drop 3,000 points if the bill is not passed. The panic mongers were to the point of telling the people the market would drop 3,000 points and there would be martial law. Sherman commented was not the same in the same context as the comment of Rep Representative Michael Burgess. Earlier in the week, Burgess, who appeared on the Alex Jones show, said Pelosi threatened to invoke House Rule 136A described as martial law intended to suspend normal procedures and safeguards as thus allowing the House leadership to operate in a more authoritarian fashion. Sherman, however, said martial law would be declared on Wall Street, not in the House of Representatives. Sherman said exaggerated fear-mongering turned out to be true, and the House could draft a bill. Regardless of the pressure put on the representatives in the past, the banker bailout bill. Army Times reported last month a battled, hardened Homeland Brigade is now going domestic. After spending time in Iraq, it appears this legal deployment under uh, designed to respond to the public disorder as an economic is deliberately and critically dismantling at the base of our rulers who are now investing in the Treasury and the executive. With the complicity of Congress, dictatorial powers here, herefore unheard in America. That's a lot of chatter. Civil war. There is a real question at stake now. Is President Obama creating a civil war in his own country? We are witnessing a slow, steady takeover of our true freedom. We are becoming a socialist nation. Whoever can't see this is probably hoping it isn't true. If we permit Mr. Obama to take over our industries, if we permit him to raise our taxes to support unconstitutional causes, then we will be at default. This great America will become a paralyzed nation. The real truth is that the Obama administration is a professionally at bullying all of us. As we witnessed with ACORN at work during the presidential campaign, it seems to me that we are sending down their bullies to create fistfights among the average American citizens who don't want government-run health care plan forced upon them. And what about all the talk of the FEMA trains and coffins? Well, I'll say if if people don't realize what's going on here, um, it's still our job to help inform them. Uh, there are over 800 prison camps in the United States, all fully operational and ready to receive prisoners. They are all staffed and even surrounded by full-time guards, but they're empty. These camps are to be operated by FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, should martial law need to be implemented in the United States. And all it would take is a presidential signature on a proclamation and the Attorney General's signature on a warrant to which a list of names is attached. Ask yourself if you really want to be on Ashcroft's list. Well, folks, I think a lot of us already are. Operation Cable Splicer and Garden Plot are the two sub-programs which will be implemented once the Rex 84 program is initiated for its proper purpose. I don't think there is a proper purpose. Garden Plot is the program to control the population. Cable Splicer is a program for an orderly takeover of the state and local governments by the federal government. FEMA is the executive's arm 
of the coming police 